Welcome guys, if you haven't seen him before, this is Pinto Bean. My name is Sheldon Thomas, and this is the SNS Horse Sharing YouTube channel. For those of you that have been following the story of Pinto Bean, he had a keratoma in the front of his foot, and he's in the process of recovering. It's been about, probably about a year and a half now. I went ahead and tried out the fast forward feature there. Figured you guys didn't need to see me taking off a shoe again. But anyways, I've been doing a video series. Every time I shoe him and so you guys can see his recovery process and how he's coming along. There's been some ups and downs in the road. So I recommend if you haven't seen those videos, go to, over to my channel and find the first video we did on him and, and kind of watch it through. It's pretty interesting to see the progress. At one time, we had to put his foot in a cast. Another time, the hole in the front of his foot had pretty much grown out and we had to the vet veterinarians had to go back in and redig it all out because it wasn't healing correctly. Anyway, there's like I said, there's been some ups and downs, and but he's looking pretty good today. It's exciting to see his progress. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of flash some pictures by you right here. Some different shoeing jobs, some different progress he's made in the past. And like I said, head over to the channel and you can watch the whole series of how Pinto Bean's been coming along. Fun fact I learned today while I was talking to Pinto Bean's owner. Um, so Pinto Bean's about 17 years old. The owner, before coming up here to go to college, is originally from California. And when Pinto Bean was a two-year-old when she bought him, and she actually bought him out of a kill pen down in California. Um, she said he was heading to Mexico. So anyway, he got lucky when he was young, and he's lucky to have a good owner now that he's older to be patient with him and work with him and give him some time to heal. And the Dr. Scholl's insole that I showed in the thumbnail, that's the last step I do, so be patient and I'll show you how I get that done right towards the end of the video. As you guys can see there, I'm gonna reuse his shoe from last time. It's still got some life left in it, so we're gonna be eco-friendly and reuse it. Um, I've had a lot of people ask about hot shoeing, and I, talking to somebody in the comments, I finally got a good analogy. It's similar to um, somebody that curls their hair with a hot iron. It doesn't hurt them unless they do it wrong and touch their scalp, then you can get burned. And that's about the same as hot shoeing. It's keratin that's not live anymore similar to your hair and you can hurt them if you do it wrong but if you do it right it doesn't hurt them at all and and helps do a better job with shoeing so you guys may have saw last time i i only used two nails as you saw the shoe stayed on just fine and with the two nails the hoof wall doesn't get damaged as much 
This time I'm gonna go ahead and put an extra nail in. Just cause as he's getting better, they're letting him have a little bit more turnout, which is good, good, good exercise, get good blood flow down to that foot. But also with that, I need to put an extra nail or so in just to hold that shoe on good. Also, that shoe does look a little funny in the back, how it's real extended out the back, coming out the heels and it's bent in just so he doesn't pull it off. But the reason behind that is the vets saw that he was what's called subluxating his coffin joint. Basically, when he would stand there, his toe would come off the ground a little bit. And so that had him pretty worried because that has to do with tendon stuff getting involved. And we're not sure why he was doing that. But anyway, they asked me to put a pretty big shoe on him just to give him some caudal support to support the back of that foot so his toe doesn't come off the ground. And we've been using this shoe for a couple cycles. So that's why we still got that. But we haven't seen that for a while, so maybe this next cycle or so we might be able to, to get him out of that shoe and get him to one that fits him just a hair better that's not so full. Okay, guys, looks like three nails will do it for this cycle. And between the three nails and the clips, that'll be plenty to hold the shoe on for the next five, six weeks. And remember, he's definitely not in full work yet. He's just still resting and recovering, so three nails will be plenty. So this right here is a product called Durasol. It's a antimicrobial gets thrush out of there so I'm going to stick it see on each side of the frog there and that just so that pad I'm going to put in there if there's too much bacteria under there over the cycle of the next four or five six weeks if there's a bunch of bacteria under that pad it's just going to multiply and divide and, and cause a big old mess under there so I throw a little bit of this Duracell in there and I let it dry you got to let it dry really good because this Equipack needs to have a dry foot to stick to really good Duracell also kind of in the name hardens up the foot which is never a bad thing okay so that blue thing you see in my hand there's just a little foam board and it's got a sticky tape on the back of it and if you wanted to before you stuck that to the foot you could hit the foot with a heat gun to dry out that Duracell real good and and get the sole of the foot real dry but I feel comfortable with what it is right now I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit right here, getting the Equipack ready. You actually need to make sure you set the foot down beforehand because what that does is make sure that sticky board, the foam board gets stuck to the foot real good. You don't want that coming off halfway through pouring your pad in. So this Equipack is actually a two-part epoxy type stuff. So that long mixing tip you see on the on the caulking gun actually has like a swirling mechanism in the tip which then mixes the two-part epoxy as it's coming out which is pretty slick. So the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory but before I run out of time I want to explain why I'm doing this with Pinto Bean because you look at the bottom of his foot and you think there's nothing wrong with the bottom of his foot it's on the front of his foot. So the reason I'm doing this is all of his weights coming down the bony column of his leg and then how a horse's foot works is that bony column then is suspended by lamina in the hoof capsule and then the weight is borne by the hoof capsule so when you do a surgery like what they've done with pinto bean you're taking away part of the connection between the bony column and the hoof wall and so what i'm doing here is this is kind of the texture of dr shoals kind of a squishy rubber type stuff and what that does is it supports the bony column and takes some of the stress off of the lamina that are left. You can see right there at the toe how much the lamina is missing and also we got some clips on there to help stabilize the front of that foot. Okay I went kind of fast there so I hope all that made sense. If you missed something make sure and ask us down in the comments. If not we'll see you in five or six weeks for an update with Pinto Bean. Have a good one.